a little something I want to run you guys through because some of you that you know may be interested in building one of these cars and you don't know nothing about them, uh, or if you bought one recently and you don't know nothing about them still, uh, this might uh, be of interest to you. You'll have two separate ID tags on the body of these cars. One of them is your VIN number. That is what should be on your title. The other one is called a trim tag or a data plate. Uh, your VIN number is always in the jam of the vehicle. If it is a sedan, like this is a 55 sedan, meaning it has a post, the VIN tag is always on the A pillar lengthways right here. Now I have tape on mine because I blasted all this and I didn't want to blast my tag. If you have a hard top or a sport coupe 55, well, all three, five, six, or seven, it will be in the door jam down here because the A-pillar structure is different on a hard top. So that is your VIN number. That is your pretty much, you know, the legality part of your car. Now, the other one is the trim tag or the data plate, and it is on the passenger side of the cowl up top right here. Now I have mine removed. These take big funky rivets that you can buy reproduction if you want to take it off to paint, you know, everything. Uh, now on my hard top, I welded up the holes completely and I don't have the data plate on there because it's a custom. This car, I'm going for more of an original style. Uh, so what I did was I step bitted the hole open a little bit. I took a flanged nut. I think it was a 1024 nut. I put a long bolt into it and I just kind of set it down in there and then I welded all the way around it and ground it smooth. So I have a basically nuts welded into the body to bolt this on with some stainless steel button head Allens. So it just looks a little better. But this normally would go here. It has all kinds of information on it. Um, I don't know this stuff off my head like Mark Warman does with Mopars, but uh, this is not the tag for this car. This was off another four-door 55 I had. But if you got an old Dan Chuck catalog like I have, uh, back in the back of the catalog, it has all the information where you can break that down right there. It talks about the VIN number, and then there's all this stuff here, the information will tell you where the car was built at, you know, V8, six cylinder, all that. Uh, it is loaded with information in the back of this catalog. This stuff's all over the internet as well. Now this will break down the VIN or the Cal tag and, and tell you everything you need to know about it. I'll try to do this slow so you can pause it, you know, if you want to, you know, read this stuff. And then it shows body styles and all that. And, uh, so this Caltag information continued from pre previous page, so I will, you know, again, break that down a little bit so you can read it. Pause the screen if you need to. Pretty interesting. And then turn the page, it shows more body styles. This is 56, this is 57, and then right here, it, it all kinds of information, you know, that, that you could... Uh, you know, decode your car and check everything out, especially if you're going for a numbers matching uh, stuff, you know, and all you want all your date codes to match on everything. It's pretty, pretty informative. Um, I will tell you another thing on uh, your car. Not only do you have a VIN number right here, it's also stamped twice on the chassis. I've heard people say it's stamped three times on the chassis and as many chassis as I've done for these cars, I've never seen a third one. I've only seen two. So I'll run you through that. So this is the chassis for my wife's four-door that I restored and I've got it setting out here and it's going to shit really quick. That's why I'm trying to get paint on the cowl so I can at least set the body on it and get it back in the garage. This one in particular is really hard to see the VIN number on. There's two places on this. Now it's really, really hard to see and I, I can't even hardly find this one. It's usually under the driver's side. Uh, floorboard area right in here, but back here you can kind of see it now so lot, Some of these are stamped really good This one is just not stamped very well, but there's your VIN number right there I don't know if that's the cameras picking up barely, but there'll be one here and there'll be one up here. I can't believe I can't find that I'm trying to get the light in it here. It is right here. What's you can barely make it out like barely but I've seen frames that are super stamped where they're kind of really indented and, uh, you know. That is where your VIN number is located on your original chest. This is more of the Caltag information, like your paint combination numbers. Uh, this is a couple more pages over from the ID uh, in this particular catalog. But, uh, you anyway, know, you get over here, it has, 
you know, interior combination is that it has the number right here. See these numbers right here, three digit number. Uh, that is going to be your trim number right here. So, what am I looking at? I don't have my dang glasses on. I was going to try to decode that. I think it says 510, so let's just look for 510 here. 55. 510, light green vinyl with dark green pattern cloth. So that is this trim tag right here for the, that was a 55 4 bar I used to have, but you know, it goes through all the different years and everything. So, you know, just in case you need to know. Now, I will tell you, if you don't have a Dan Chuck catalog, they might have this online if they have a website. I don't know. Also, you can go to try5.com forum and join up. It is free. You don't have to pay nothing. Uh, wealth of information on that site. I love that site. I've been a member there for a long time, since 04, 05, somewhere in there. Uh, lots of knowledgeable guys on there. So... You know, if you're just starting out uh, and you have any kind of questions about your car, like if you've drug one in, never done it before, I would highly recommend to join that forum and go in there and read. Now, I will tell you, if you're joining a forum, especially that forum, most car forums are the same way. If you join that forum and you're going to ask, what engine mounts do I need for my Tri-5 Chevy or, you know, 55 Chevy with a small block Chevy or something, don't go in there, sign in, and then immediately ask that question because they're, they're not going to like that. <laughs> The reason is that question probably gets asked 20 times a month. Uh, so you can do a search. They have a search bar at the top of that page and you can type in exactly what you're asking and it'll come up and you'll be able to read it. Instead of going in there and type it in and waiting for somebody to reply, uh, go that way. Now, if you do join that forum brand new, you've never been there before and you sign in, again, it's free. I'm not trying to push it. I'm not getting paid to say this. I've just been a member there. I've got a lot of respect for a lot of those guys on there. They help me out many times. There's different categories in there to help you out as well. But if you go in there and you sign up and you're able to, you know, reply or post anything, go in there to the introduction page and introduce yourself and tell what car you are working on. A lot of those guys, uh, later on, you will ask a question and they won't know what kind of car you're working on so they can click on your name and see that, uh, you know, what you're working on there by doing a search, you know, of your posts or whatever. So. Just trying to give out a little bit more information for you guys just in case all right i'm going to show you something here just in case some of you guys do not know now i usually gear my videos 99.9 .9 of the time to the amateur diy guys in a two-car garage or out in their driveway or into the shade tree or whatever because professionals already know all this stuff you know with differences between the three years of tri fives there is lots of stuff out there and if you don't know uh can get you into trouble sometimes but I wanted to show this this is a reproduction firewall pad uh, this goes up on the firewall on the inside of the car and this really needs to be put on before you put anything else on um, I have put one in with the original uh, you know the brake pedal assembly in the car it does make it a little tough but usually these need to go in first before anything else is put on the car so you know once you're sand and buff job is done on the outside of the car after paint this would be the first thing i do if you have a gutted shell like i have here uh, now this is the inexpensive one this is a cardboard which is what they had from the factory this is a reproduction of original <clears throat> i like these they do have a molded one i've never bought one they're expensive they're like double the price of this one now I looked around on eBay trying to find a good deal couldn't find one i have always got these from h and h classic chevy so uh, if you want to save a little money, I would go to H&H. &H. Now, when I went to H&H's website and looked at this like a week ago to buy one, uh, they were out of the 55 ones. They had zero in stock. They had three in stock of the 56, and that's what this one is. Now, 55 and 56 Chevy takes the same firewall. 57 does not interchange. So, I do not know if there's anything else possibly different from 56, like of the, the cutouts here that you would, you know, go in and cut these out. I don't know for sure, uh, but what I can tell you is this will work in your 55, but there is an upgrade you can do. If you buy one for a 56, it will come with these clips if you buy it from H&H. &H. These are plastic Christmas tree style clips. These are what 56 had. 
In 55, they had a steel uh, clip like this, but it, you had to push it together to get it in the firewall, and it had real sharp shark teeth on both sides. So the problem with those, this is why I would put a 56 clips in your 55. Those shark teeth steel clips, when you go to install that on a freshly painted firewall, I've got all my holes welded up. But when you push that clip through the steel one, it will chunk the crap out of the paint job. So this is a better way to go there. These are plastic. Now these can be a little bit difficult to put in. You got to give them quite a bit of pressure to get them in there. They do have a tool in the catalogs that goes in there. It's like a punch with a flat, you know, big round part on it uh, to put on there to hammer them in. Now I do not know 100% if the holes in the firewall of a 55 are smaller than 56. I do not know. So uh, what I would do, since all mine are filled here, I can't do anything. I would caliper the low side of that clip and then caliper the hole in the firewall and just see. But this is what I would do because the other reason is if you're going to work on your car under the hood, like sometimes I did it myself back years ago, you'll reach in behind the engine. I think I was changing the, the oil pressure uh, fitting on the back of the engine and I scratched my arm up pretty get pretty good because of them steel shark teeth clips These don't take off skin. So well, I guess they could if you really got across them hard enough, but So I would you know do a 56 one it, just me uh, the thing about these are They have a jute padding on the back to help kind of kill the sound, you know It's not very thick, but it does have jute on the back of it but you know, you'll have to go through and punch out your holes and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> I mean, it looks like there's quite a bit of stuff in here. And again, I don't know if there's something pre-punched in a 56 and a 55 doesn't have, but this will work. Now, what I did on mine, I did a video of this a long time ago. And I've done it to both cars. Where the holes are in the firewall, I replaced that with a quarter by 20 bolt. And I, I think half inch would be ideal but all I had here was three quarter inch. They're a little too long, so I'm gonna have to go in and grind them down a little bit. But I take that bolt and I will clean the CAD plating off the head so you can get a good weld on it. And then I'll take a Sharpie and I'll draw a dot right in the center of the head of that bolt. That way, when you stick that bolt up there where your original clips come through the firewall, you can stick that bolt up here in one of these holes for, like this or have somebody hold it. You line your Sharpie dot up with the center of that hole and you weld it up. Then it's fully welded and you can grind it and you got a smooth firewall with a stud on the inside to hang that on. Now what I like to use is a little bit bigger washer, about the size washer of that. And then I use an acorn nut and it'll hide the threads of the bolt. Now you can go and paint that stuff with spray paint black if you wanted to, like a flat black or semi-gloss black, and put the hardware on. Um, I did it on my hardtop. What I really like about these reproduction ones, uh, it, it's all fresh, crisp, and clean. It doesn't stink because over the years, these things deteriorate and they get a smell in them, you know, like mouse uh, has used the bathroom on it. You know, you're never going to get that smell out of there. But they have this rubber uh, edge sewn onto them, and your carpet tucks under the edge of that. So it looks like a nice finished edge across the bottom of your firewall. I can show you here if it's not too dark in the car. <clears throat> You can kind of see it going across the top of my carpet there, so it looks nice and clean. Now on mine, when I put mine in, the throttle pedal didn't line up very well with the punched hole, so I had to do my own. So I tried to use a plastic grommet on there to make it look better, and it doesn't. I do have something else found that I'm going to try, so I'll have to take that back off and try something else. But you can see the acorn nuts right here in washers. Now I did just do them in stainless, just left them stainless steel and put them in there, but I'm gonna go back and pull these back off one at a time and paint them and reinstall them because it just, it's too in your face really for that. But it makes it nice if you ever decide to take the car back down at, at a certain point, uh, you can get that out pretty easy instead of trying to get those, those push in clips out because those will just, they'll destroy themselves when you try to take them back out. They just, they rip apart, so. But if you don't want to go through the hassle of welding in bolts and stuff to hang that on and bolt it on, those clips will be just fine. But if you want to save your paint, get the 56 ones. Again, check the hole size because I'm not 100% if they're the same as 55. They probably are the same. I just don't know for a fact. But 
I'm using the factory deluxe heater box and blower motor and all that stuff, factory wiper system, so uh, I'll probably just about take everything out of that thing that's, you know, pre-punched. But Just thought I'd give that information, guys. Somebody might need to know that. I wanted to show this. I've been slowly collecting uh, windshield washer pieces for my wife's four-door because I already have one done for my two-door hardtop. I did this to a car back in the 90s when I had a four-door 55 I fixed up, uh, so I did it again for my hardtop, but I do have a video on this, how to modify this on the cheap uh, if you want one. Uh, they did offer a vacuum and electric on these uh, windshield washer pumps that you know are mounted to the top of the, the lid there. I usually like to get uh, the one that doesn't have this conglomeration on top of it. It just has two little spouts, you know. And then you can like put a hose on the bottom and run it down in there. Again, it's in my playlist under Try 5 Tech Tips. Uh, and it's uh, how to modify a factory windshield washer setup. Now, I will tell you these jars are pretty much the same. Uh, Buick Olds, Pontiac, and all that is Chevrolet. The brackets are different. I like the Buick ones. This is from a mid-50s Buick. Um, I got this one off eBay like six months ago. Uh, the Buick is, is designed a little bit different, and it's a little bit stouter. The factory Chevy one is a little flimsy and thin. I like the Buick one better. Of course, I'll have to custom build a bracket uh, to bolt it to the inner fender of the car, but that's just what I do. Now, the, the lid on this, it usually has this big mess up here, and I have never tried to overhaul one of these or you know rebuild it or do whatever. Uh, I try to, to just basically butcher it and modify it the way I want to make it work. So I drilled the rivets out and I'd replaced it with 632 stainless steel Allen buttons and I've got nylon lock nuts on the back. It's not tight, it's just sitting on there. Uh, but I'll go through and blast and repaint all this stuff separately. I'll polish up the plastic you know, base piece right here so it looks nice. But I basically drilled a hole all the way through through this port right here until this brass piece of 3 16 tubing fit down in there kind of snug. So this is what will go down into the bottom. This is different than the way I did my hard top. This will go down in there, and then I'll cut it off. We're just a little bit sticking up at the top for the hose to go on for the suction. Now, this is the hardest part to find. You can do this with just a push button, momentary push button, or uh, in my playlist. I don't, I can't remember the number, none of that. I don't have this in this with me right here, but there's a little button that you can put on the back of this. I usually take off this part, but you can put a button back here and bolt it on. And when this rod right here for this push button goes in, it activates that momentary push button. So this will work like factory. This is the hardest part to find if you're trying to find it uh, for your car to make it work on the car like, like stock did. This is a push button for your windshield washer. So you got to keep in mind how hard to find this would be because this was optional. You know, this, the standard uh, just has a little plug in it. So now me working on a 210, this one has black centered knobs and if you can imagine anybody that bought a 210 more than likely or 150 with a black insert you know they did probably didn't get a windshield washer unit because they didn't get a radio most of the time and that type of stuff so this one was very difficult to find and i can tell you something else when you're looking at these on say ebay because i looked for all the time on ebay looking for one of these for a 210 and finally somebody posted that and i bought it immediately it was like 25 bucks just for that knob with this push button so, usually when you find them on eBay, even for a Bel Air, this part right here is chrome plated and it was pitted so bad that if you tried to push that button in, it would just seize up in there from all the raised pitting. Uh, so, trying to find one with good chrome on it is, is kind of difficult to do. But I got lucky when I found this one and this one's in super nice shape. So I'll go through and polish all this and, and make it look nice. but. Anyway, I found the, the push button part for that knob, but this is the motor that I use. This is a windshield washer pump. Uh, this is 65-01 and it's an ANCO. These are universal, basically. Uh, it has an inlet and an outlet and a little mounting flange for two screws. It is that simple. Be sure and mount this close to this because you want that as close as you can get it to that for a strong suction. So. I just want to show that guys I've been you know collecting a few parts and I just recently found this on eBay and I was so proud because this is hard to find in a 210 150 or 210 black centered knob with a push button um, 
This one does not have it. It looks like it. I've never tried it. It looks like there's a plug inside here that you could probably knock out and it would be open like this, but I'm not 100%. But I'm pretty sure that's maybe just a little plastic plug in there you can knock out from the back side or whatever, but or the front, I don't know. But uh, there's a lot of Bel Air ones on there, but for me, being a detail guy and this being a 210, I wanted the black centered knobs. So my neighbor finished up the speaker box here. So, you know, none of the stuff is, the speaker's not screwed in or nothing. The stuff's just sitting in there. That's why I got it leaning it up at an angle. But that's pretty much what it'll look like. So it's a, a vintage 50s Samsonite suitcase, uh, but it's actually a hidden subwoofer. It'll be in the trunk of the car. Now, when I put this and the other two pieces of Samsonite luggage with it, they'll all be kind of layered in there nicely, but they will be bolted to a uh, little plywood floor I'm putting in the in the bottom of the car kind of like this I mean, this is just this piece of masonite but I will be carpeting this with carpet but uh, for that car I've got an original trunk mat that will go in there but I want to put a piece like this in there and then put the mat over it and that way I can run you know bolts up through or screws machine screws up through the bottom and then put nuts and bolts in it but they'll be I've got three of those cases, you know, a hat box and then a little makeup box and then that, and they all three match. It's the same, same luggage. So it's going to be a really neat unit. I, I'm pretty proud of that. That's for, for me being a detail guy, I just, I absolutely love it. All right, guys, I've talked about this in an older video, but it, I really wanted to show right here something. If you're in metalwork stage and you're restoring your uh, tri five whether it's a two door or four door you need to check this before you do any paint work this is a reproduction set of door seal plates for this car and i have pretty much figured out that you might as well just weld up your original screw holes from your door seal plates uh, if you're buying new ones because they don't ever line up now i will say they do line up all three of these holes actually line up but look how far out they are. That'll go in until the screw hole completely disappears. So that thing has to come out to there before the screw hole lines up. So, and it's the same way on the front ones. Same thing, screw holes, they, they pretty well line up, but it's out to there. And when I shove it up where it needs to be against the body, you know, so. Just wanted to make sure you guys were aware of that. And the other reason to uh, mock up your door seal plates when you're in your metalwork stage, like all this is, you know, clean metal around here, you have to bend these ends a little bit to get them to fit the body. So I'm going to go in here and just use my hands and, and get these to bend uh, to contour the body a little bit because it's actually sitting up off of the, the I'm going to slightly bend that for the carpet just a little bit. But instead of trying to do it after paint's on it and you go in there and try to push that down, it will gouge your paint up. So just thought I'd show that. <laughs> <laughs> 